As Africa's biggest economy grapples with the devastation, neighboring Cameroon opened its Lagda Dam to ease water pressure on its side of the border along the Benue River. To serve as a buffer, Nigeria was supposed to complete the Dancing Hausa Dam, but that is not finished despite promises made decades ago. While I would agree with you that um, climate change is also a root cause of um, the flooding that we're experiencing, but it's not the sole cause of it. Um, in 1982, the Lagro Dam was built in Cameroon and there was an agreement by the Nigerian government to build a twin size dam that would accommodate twice as um, uh, much um, water that would be released from the Lagro Dam. But 40 years after, it has not been done. So I would say that the flooding is being caused by the negligence and the lack of preparation by the Nigerian government. I wouldn't be surprised if this happens again next year and the year after um, because we have we don't have enough early warning signs put in place, signs put in place. I need the Nigerian government to step up to the, um, the game to make provisions for infrastructure that can um, accommodate such floodings. You know, make sure that these um, infrastructures are put in place in adequate time. Hi there, welcome to Connected Conversations. My name is Praise Aze. And it's another insightful episode. Today, our topic is, uh, is one that may actually bring tears to our faces because it reveals a lot of things that are happening, reveals a lot of discrepancies in our system. But nonetheless, I have someone here with me who is going to be doing justice to the topic. Zira, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Rajin Sinshalia, and I'm happy to be here. Great to have you here. Now, we just watched that video of your interview two years ago two years ago on this same issue of flooding and from there till now we are still having the same issue that was discussed two years ago what do you think is the exact problem with the flooding um so you know when i was on the field two years ago and i was being interviewed and i casually just said that um, this flooding i mean Everyone can say it's being caused by climate change, right? So there's mm. no doubt that we're having increased, increased, increase in annual rain, rainfall, right? Yeah, we're seeing yeah. weather changes, we're mm. seeing droughts, we're seeing witnessing erosion, we're seeing just extreme climate, mm. you know, uh, and weather changes. But then I casually said that I, I believe that the flood is being caused by the negligence of the Nigerian government, and I, I and I and I stand to repeat what I said two mm. years ago. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's the same thing. It's being caused by the negligence, lack of preparedness you know, lack of putting in place um, flood management uh, measures, you mm. know, by the Nigerian government. So I think mm. this is what is causing the flood. And that's why we're back here again. Okay, so let's get down into it. What should they have done that they haven't done? So, I mean, before I get into that question, okay. a very interesting question, I'd like to, to ask, you know, uh, you know, because so, someone can ask me, what do I mean by the lack of negligence, you know, by the Nigerian government? So... As a country, the government is responsible for basic things such as security, mm. safety, well, which is security, you know, um, ensuring that the citizens are safe. Mm. But tell me why two years after we witnessed one of the worst floodings that happened, well, by the way, the worst flooding that happened happened in 2012, right? Mm. Um, year in, year out, we see how this becomes an annual reoccurrence. Mm. Tell me why we're witnessing another flood, right? And no measures have been put in place. Mm. I would say that we do not have early warning systems in place. So mm. the approach by the Nigerian government is always reactive and never proactive. Mm -hmm. And what this means is we always wait till something happens and then we begin to do fire brigade approach. Sure. You know, flood is something that is seasonal. Mm. So flood cannot happen during the dry season, sure. right? I mean, we're seeing climate change, but then Ordinarily, it will happen during the rainy season. Sure. So tell me why we have to wait till we get to the rainy season. We wait to see the devastating impact of the flood before we begin to provide relief measures. And if you ask me, I believe that the Nigerian government are just hell bent on, you know, ensuring that they provide um, medicine, um, food, shelter, which, by the way, those who are affected, you know, deserve all sure. of these things. But these sure. things are a temporary fix, if sure. you ask me. Sure. What measures can we put in place to ensure that before these things happen, mm. right? People are being evacuated to safe places, sure. right? What early warning systems are we going to put in place to ensure that you get an alert? I know if you're outside the country, you get a prompt sure. that there's going to be a severe weather, weather conditions. Sure. I know that people living in those places are usually evacuated, mm. you know, to lower risk places. But you, you get nothing like that. Mm. So it, it, for me, I'm tempted to say that there's just a... Um, 
I, I don't know the right word, but then there's just something about the trail it, that the, the government enjoys in, in or they, they, probably, they probably don't pay much attention to, or they don't think it's that much of a, of a, of a disaster. I don't mm. know if, if that's the right word, but mm. then there's just something about it happening annually and us repeating the same pattern, which I believe is exhausting. Okay, now let's go to the issue of dams. And we know that um, most times when we have all of this flooding, it always has something to do with the dam. So before I get to the issue of the Cameroonian Dam, which is still a looming danger, I will still get to that. But now I know that in, in, our, in our budgets, there are always allocations for, that are put out for the dams and everything and everything. I know we also have the ecological fund mm -hmm. that helps us in times like this. Yeah. What, but what is the problem with all of these resources? Because they are all, we, we constantly get billions and millions released for all of these things, but we don't see anything. Where is all the money going to? I mean, it's Nigeria. We have funds that are budgeted for these things, mm. but on paper, right? Mm. But then when it comes to implementation, it's always a problem. Um, I was checking a statistic that showed that, um, in fact, Midugri um, is one of the top five states that have received the most ecological funds from January 2022 up to 2024. I think it's about 3.8 billion naira. And obviously, wow. when you go down to the budget, you know, you get to see allocations for rehabilitations of um, reconstructions of, of dams. So, mm. what that means is they're supposed to be inspecting the dam, mm. checking the capacity of the dam. Frequently. Because obviously, it's something that is, you know, um, um, outside where humans are. So, when you get there, you see that there are, you know, uh, crops growing in the Sure. Yeah. So what it means is the capacity for the water capacity keeps getting shortened. Mm. But if you don't go back to redig, to you know, to reconstruct, to ensure that it's in the right state, what mm. will happen is a, is a disaster, mm. just like we've seen in Borno State. Mm. So yeah. So now, who, who, who are we to hold? I want us to make this uh, put this out there. Who is to be blamed for this lack of management, lack of swift action, lack of implementation? Who do we blame? Government, because I mean, praise. I don't know if I should blame myself for it. I'm just a citizen. There's just very little that I can do. But mm. I think the government, who are saddled with responsibility for providing safety to the average you, citizen, do you have agencies that that should? Oh be? yes, we have NEMA. Yeah, emergency management. So they, management. They, they, so we have the state emergency management agencies okay. as well mm. that are responsible. Why, 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 when you're going through publications now, what you see is them trying to salvage the situation after the harm has been done already. You not know, being proactive to not being stop proactive, it from happening. Not being proactive. Why can't we have, you know, simple measures? Why can't we even enforce simple things like environmental policies to, mm. to ensure that we stop deforestation? Mm. Why can't we enforce things like that? So if you look at the setting in Nigeria, most of the houses, most of the infrastructure have little or no non-existent drain, uh, drainage systems. True. What it means is that these drainages are being clogged. People are dumping refuge in these drainages. True. Nothing is being done. True. You find out that there are people who are building in places that they shouldn't build. Exactly. You know, we saw what happened in Lagos when all of a sudden, you know, it felt like they just knew that Lagos was on a coastal, mm -hmm. and then they said, well, one, they, you know, they immediately began to, um, what is it called now, um, evacuate people living in those places mm. without even communicating it properly. Mm. But these things, you, you know, you have a structure, mm. you have the map of the state, you know what it's supposed to be like, you know that this state is sitting on water, literally. Mm. And you know what they say, water will always find its way. We have to live. We deserve a better life. We deserve every good thing that, that, that is available. And so this is just a call to anyone who cares to listen. Let's not keep losing our lives over things that can be solved, over things that can be prevented. Let's do better. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Connected Conversations. Had me here. Thank you so much for Thank you. I, I just I really hope that we we'll won't come back here two years ago. That'll be fine. It should be very sad. I hope we don't. My name is Chris Azi. We'll see you on another time.